mm-hmm. and we're going to have to do some prayer and fasting. <laughs> and so if you guys want to join yeah, us on this point. prayer and fasting, uh, we'll, we'll probably be back in two weeks and and talking about uh, how, you know, let's see how many days we, we fast. Yeah. You know, I think this might be a good, like, January, like, beginning of January thing. Yeah. That- yeah, you know, that would be good to fast at the beginning of the year for this coming year. Right. So start to think about those things. Like, what are the things that you're praying for, you're hoping for, that you feel in your walk? I mean, even if you're just brand new, like, Mm -hmm, hey, mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. Jesus gets baptized, then goes into the desert right away to pray and fast. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, after he passes the test, which you can pass the test, you just got to remember your authority that's already been given to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he goes on and do great things. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Ignite Fire podcast. My name's Jacob. We got Jeff Shirell back in the house. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, brother. It's a pleasure to be back, my friend. So we're going to be talking about prayer and fasting. Yes. And so, you know, those who are watching, if you're watching a video on prayer and fasting, then we're trying to convince you to pray and fast because we're not, we don't want to be the only one suffering. You know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Come join us. Come join us. Yeah. 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 Join we us do it in as a this group. prayer it's, and it's, fasting. It's much better. And it creates, you know, a brotherhood and a bondage. You yeah. Know, bonding. Bondage. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bondage, we don't mind that. Yeah. No, no, no. So so when we were talking about this, um, you were talking about a scripture that you wanted to read. Right. So the whole this whole thing came out of <laughs> a social media short that, you know, I just came across scrolling and it said... Does your Bible have now? This is home, this is a try this at home, friends. Uh huh. Go grab your Bible. Turn to Ma- ch- turn to Matthew. Okay. So you 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 did a little. You got a little ahead of us here. So go to Matthew. And does your Bible have verse Matthew in chapter seventeen, verse twenty one? Seventeen. See. Yes. Verse twenty one. Let's see. Now, if it was the NIV, I'd be a little worried. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, mm-hmm. nearly inspired version. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not that yet. So we have uh, 17, verse 21, yes. You want me to read it? Yes. Okay. Do I start at 20? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief... Oh, okay. Oh, mm. this is where we... So some context. <laughs> they were... Uh, uh, going to cast a demon out of a boy. That's right. This is where Jesus is, is, is he's commissioned the disciples to heal the sick and cast out demons, right? Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that the disciples were commissioned, they were empowered, and they were given the authority to do it. But they couldn't on this little boy. Mm-hmm. How many times do people go to pastors prayer ministers, and people in authority in the church. They want healing from the Lord. They go to get prayer. It doesn't happen, and they're discouraged thinking it wasn't God's will for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the case. Mm. And so even the disciples that were with Jesus and given all of that power and authority couldn't do it. So don't get discouraged if you go to somebody and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it says, so here it says, Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Now he's talking to the disciples here because they're saying, Jesus, why could we not heal this boy? Right. And he says, <laughs> they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed. Yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. very interesting. They're right. embarrassed. And he said, and Jesus clearly says it. So it's, it's, so it's important. He says, it's because of your unbelief. Mm-hmm. For surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will buy uh, nothing will be impossible for you however this kind does not go out except for prayer and fasting and you know it's interesting now i I, i've heard this shared different ways Mm -hmm. but when he's talking about prayer and fasting i heard and i like this he wasn't necessarily talking about the spirit he was talking about their unbelief that's it you know, and my wife pointed that out too. When, oh, really? When, yeah. When when I first saw that short, uh huh. And it was interesting because the guy they had like three or four Bibles, and they had this the guy you know the the, the wife in this video 
had her like grandmother's Bible, which had this verse in it. And of course, immediately, you know, I turn my Bible open and I'm like looking. And it's amazing when you ask this question to different people um, and you say, oh, oh, uh, what does verse Matthew 17, 21 say in your Bible? And mm-hmm. they go and they look at it and like, they're like, uh, well, 22. And I'm like, okay, but what what about 21? And they're like, they look and it says 20. And then you can just see like... Uh the shift happened in the brain. They're like, wait a second, why is this verse missing? Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, so <laughs> when that happened, for me, I was like, I got to get a new Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, it, I like this this scripture too, because a lot of people put everything on God. Mm-hmm. God didn't do it. God should have done it. Uh, and they get angry with God and all this. And Jesus is clearly saying, hey, let's look at who's praying. Right. They have some responsibility in this. Yes. And I think we were talking about that a little bit earlier, saying, you know, uh, there's, 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 and I've mentioned this before to other people, that there's two types of praying that make things ineffective. And one is people will ask God to do something he's already done, Mm -hmm. and or they will ask God to do something that he's commanded them to do. That's very interesting. And we should go through the Bible to see where we're in error in our prayer. And, you know, I think that's very interesting and very wise because it says, you know, yes, pray, but also it's very powerful for you to get into the word. What does the word yes. actually say? So, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I can't think of a good example at the moment, but, you know, it's like doing one without the other, you know, it doesn't have it as, it's not going to be as strong. Yeah. And if you can enhance it, like, deep in, in your understanding of the situation, especially with what, what, what you're praying for, such as you've talked about healing, you know, getting into an understanding, what does God and Jesus say about our ability to heal yeah. others? And so this is one of those things right there where, you know, what does it say about our ability to cast out, cast out demons? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I want to, so in James, mm-hmm. uh, he also says something very, very profound here. And, and in James, it says, um, therefore, I uh, think it's James chapter 1, verse 21. Mm-hmm. It says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness. Yep. I love this one. And, over, and, over, uh, and overflow of wickedness and receive with weakness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man. Now listen to this. He is like a man Mm -hmm. observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in him all he does. And I think that's what uh, what happened when I went into AA. I wasn't just hearing, you know, a sermon mm-hmm. or something good. They were actually putting me to work to do the scriptures. And uh, I also like, I think it says here about prayer. Um, let's see. Let's go to, let's go find it. Ah, oh, here it is. Yeah. Is, uh, it, is it the highlighted part you have? It is. It's the highlighted part. <laughs> Don't you highlight it so you can get, get there faster. <laughs> James chapter 5, verse 13. So I love this. It says, is anyone, is anyone mm-hmm. among you suffering? So he asks a question. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. So yeah. don't go to the pastor. Don't go to someone else. He says, let that person pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Now, this is interesting because people want to know about healing, right? Mm-hmm. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, it he will be forgiven. Confess your, your trespasses one to another and pray for one for another that you may be healed. Mm-hmm. So is it the if it is it God's will for us to be healed? Yes. And it's and I mean it's right here. Mm-hmm. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah and it, and then it goes into don't give up. Yeah. Continue to pray. Elijah was a man with 
a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And so it's interesting earnestly. that Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain, it'll move. Here mm-hmm. it gives you an actual um, an actual situation where Elijah prayed for the elements. Right. And he said he prayed that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and then the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced fruit. I like that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we have to trust that it's in his timing and his will, and to be perseverant, to endure, you know, long-suffering, you know, James 1, 2 through 4, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it talks about that, right? These trials, you know, can be a testing of your faith, and let that trial produce what it's supposed to produce. So, you know, it might take some time, but you are to be there, again, walking it out as best as possible in the fruits of the Spirit, Yeah, uh, you know, through that. And and then as well, like, you know, you, such as yourself or others, you know, have gifts. We all have the ability to do what the Word says. Yeah. The ch- you know, the challenge is sometimes we get around those who have those gifts that can really free us from the uh, from what's coming against us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there's another scripture here in James. I love James. I know. Um, he talks about when you... Uh, when you pray for something, um, and you don't receive it, say please, 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 with sugar <laughs> on top. <laughs> but that's not it. Uh, James chapter one, I, I, and so he's talking about wisdom, right? So when we ask God, he says, "If if, if any of you, this isn't, is J- isn't he always talking about wisdom? A lot. Okay, <laughs> keep going, keep going. James chapter one, verse five. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally." And without reproach. So it's interesting. People think that they have to come to God and beg and beg and beg. Mm. And it says here that if you lack something, go to God. He gives liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But listen to this. Let him ask in faith. So we have to ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven, tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Mm. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So he's first talking about wisdom. Yeah. He says, if a man lacks wisdom, then let him come ask God, and God will give it to him because he's liberal and, he, and, he, and, he's, and, he's, and he's willing to give it to you. But don't doubt. And if you doubt and you're not asking in faith, then don't expect to get anything. So it starts with, Wisdom, mm-hmm. he ends with anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says you're not going to receive anything. That's an interesting one too, because you can think about how you know Jesus says, or is it Jesus or God? Jesus says it rains on both the believers and the unbelievers. Yeah, yeah. So, and God's will is going to be done whether you believe or not. Um, so, but you know, I think that's a that's a great point right there, and it is very convicting to me because. Mm-hmm. I was anxious. I was doubtful, right? And mm-hmm. I remember the leader of our men's group one time came to me and said, Jeff, you either believe or you don't. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> I was like, you got me. You know, and and it's and there's lots of scriptures like that, and there's a lot of apologetics and stuff that people will explain a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff away, mm-hmm. and it just doesn't make sense to me mm-hmm. when there's verses in there like that. And, and, uh, and a lot of people, and I, I won't argue with people anymore, but they'll talk about suffering, right? Well, there's two types of suffering. If you, if you, if you start reading and especially when Paul starts talking about it, people will associate sickness and disease with part of their suffering, but there's a clear distinction when they talk about the suffering for Christ and being relieved of the suffering of sickness. Right. And so Paul talks about these infirmities, right? These weaknesses that come on them. And he's talking about being persecuted for the preaching of the gospel. And he says, night, Mm -hmm. he goes, I've been in, I've been in perils of naked. We can go to the scripture too. It's, it's really awesome because people get so confused with Paul and they're like, well, Paul was, was, was sick and Paul was, and I'm like, where does it say that? It doesn't say that. It says that, uh, there were some issues with his eyes. After he got stoned to death, <laughs> you know, uh, wow. they left him there to die, and 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 here he comes miraculously comes back. I'm sure his body needed some time to heal. You know, oh, his know. face probably didn't look okay at the moment. Yeah, wow. And so he probably had some issues, you know, right after. 
So, but uh, it, they talk about suffering, and he start and, and he says Satan came to buffer me. A, a messenger of Satan came to buffer. So it wasn't from God. Oh wow! And he said he came to wear me down, so I so I would stop to preach the gospel. Stop preaching the gospel. Yeah. And uh, and and then if you look at the suffering of the saints in I think the Hall of Fame in Hebrews eleven, it talks about all these persecutions that came for their faith. Nothing about sickness or suffering with sickness. Hmm. And uh, and and that's that's an interesting thing that that I I've I've discovered for myself. None of the suffering that is talked about in the New Testament is referring to sickness. Interesting. It's all referred to the persecution of the saints for the gospel's sake. So does so is oh my gosh. Let me think here. So is suffering a result of doing God's work? Yeah, and it's and it's the it's the uh, opposition from Satan. Right. Right. He's just trying to slow you down. Yeah. 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 And then and then it says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but yeah. against principalities, right? Yeah. So he uses the weaknesses of of those who are non believers yeah. and some believers. He'll use them to persecute other Christians or other believers for the for the advancement of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, um, like if you look at the early disciples, right, they all suffered tremendously. But in none of the writings does it say that they suffered sickness. It says they suffered the persecution of Rome, mm-hmm. of of people trying to disrupt the church, of of the lashings, the whippings, the 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 physical, you know, turmoil of a violence yeah. to stop the gospel. So with that said, that statement, uh, in the, let me make sure that I got this right. You're saying that in the New Testament does not talk about sickness. As being a suffering for Christ. Okay. Um, if there is, yeah. I'd like someone to show me. Yeah. Because I haven't found one yet. Yeah. Well, I'm just interested, you know, so so what's your deal? You you have a sinus infection from last week. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, so, and you're, yeah, yeah, again, like we were joking last time, you have the gift of healing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me touch myself. <laughs> I know. Pray, lay, laying hands. So, so what are you saying that sickness, so what, explain that then. Okay, so you have suffering for the gospel and then you have sickness so so i so this is where where i've come to believe okay sickness all the wrong things that happens to us mm-hmm. is the result of the fall of man from the garden mm-hmm. of eden and so there was no sickness there was nothing in there right uh once man rebelled against god uh partake partake of the fruit and uh god became um or man became subject to the things of satan right and so so the woman actually submitted to Satan. The man submitted to the woman. Yep. So then all of a sudden the hierarchy kind of got, got flipped upside down. Yeah. And then the woman became man's God, which is pretty apparent. That's interesting. And then Satan became the woman's God. Oh my God. And it became this 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 inversion. Inversion of, yep. of what the original plan was. And so of course, any kind of man in leadership is not gonna be looked well upon the world because that's the way it was originally intended. Oh, wow. God, man, right. woman, children, right. you know. Right. So anyways, <clears throat> it was like Pandora's box. Yeah. Um, sickness and death came into the world. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the Old Testament, sickness, according to the uh, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, was was a punishment from God for the wrongs that they've done. So then... Uh, up until there was no law, up until Moses, mm-hmm. and then man said, "Well, we can do it. We 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 can live the way we can live. We can live to the standards that you have, bro. We got this." And so God <laughs> says, "Okay, you want to live to the standards that need to be uh, met. These are the commandments, and if you fail mm. to mm. walk in these, this is the curse. And if you do follow these." Then this is the blessing. Mm-hmm. So there's now there's blessings and cursing that come to the to to the to the uh, Jewish people, and um, sickness comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. If you allow the common cold to go unchecked and your body can't fight it off, it'll it'll kill somebody. Right. 
So I, that's not from God. That's, that's, you know, something that's coming to, to take your life. And, uh, and I do believe that sickness has a life behind it. Okay. All sickness has a life. All right. Talk and, more. And I think that, and I believe that that life is demonic in nature. Gotcha. Because it comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What is the demonic name for the common cold? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. I'm asking you. You're, <laughs> you're the doctor. <laughs> that, that, that's Dr. Been, Jacob. And, and this is, and this is really cool. Influenza. And this is really cool. And so I did this I study, say. right? And I didn't realize we were going to go into all this uh, cool sickness stuff. Um, but Deuteronomy, mm-hmm. so 28, right? Now, this is part of the curse of the law. This is really cool. In verse 50, uh, 59... Deuteronomy 28, 59 says, Then the Lord will bring on you, this is a curse, Mm. for for disobeying the law. He says, Then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and and serious and prolonged sickness. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were afraid, and they will cling to you. Also, every sickness... And every plague which is not written in this book of the law, the Lord will bring on you. So it even accounts for new sicknesses, new plagues are all under the curse of the law. Interesting. And then... Or does it talk about 2020 in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a new one. Yep. So that's under the curse of the law. Apparently. And then, but what's gospel mean? Good news. Good news. Tell me I got, some good news. I got brother. some good news for you in Galatians. I love this. Galatians 3:13. This is what it says. <laughs> dun dun dun. It says uh Galatians 3:13. Where are you? Uh, the devil's hiding it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm in Ephesians. <laughs> no, look at that. All right, Lord, give him eyes oh, to see. there we go. And Galatians, fingers to turn to the right page. Galatians 3, 13. And it says, Don't you have the bookmarks in there? I do. <laughs> All right. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse oh, of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses every one who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, and we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, that's very interesting. So... Saying that Christ redeemed us, and then you're saying that in the New Testament does not talk about sickness. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. In that, in that, Man, in that wild, this book is crazy. So Jesus saying, so in Deuteronomy 28, it says that all sickness, all disease is under mm-hmm. the curse. But then it says here in Galatians, uh, Galatians that Jesus became a curse for us, and He redeemed us from yeah. that law. So wouldn't that mean all sickness and disease yeah. if it was part of the curse? That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. And then I think, uh, uh, and I think, and I do really believe Satan uses sickness. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I would fully agree with you. And you know, just like you've you've seen when we were, before we jumped on here, that when you start to get some wind against you, some uh, some resistance against oh, your yeah. plans, it, it's like. You should almost smile because, like, oh, I'm going down a good path here, right? Yes, yeah. You know, either either I'm going down a great path or, or, you know, I think that's the time to ask the question, too, or, Lord, are you trying to protect me? But, you know, if you know that this is from God and you've prayed on it and God's leading you and then you start to get resistance. Oh, know, yeah. Car breaks down. You start to oh, get yeah. ill. You know, somebody starts to act out. Things um, are coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, family member starts to come against you. It's like almost like count it all a joy, right? You know, yeah, yeah. You know, let a smile crack and be like, okay. Yeah, I'm, and, being, and, and, I'm being attacked right, right now. Right, right. Yeah. So, so somebody that's listening who finds themselves sick because this time of year, you know, people are getting together, they're doing a lot of, um, you know, eating whatever they want, drinking whatever they want, uh-huh. spending time with family, sharing germs and love and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> what should they, what would you recommend them to do? You know, and what what you know and what you've read, and especially when these illnesses sicknesses come up, you know. So, um, so fasting mm-hmm. oh, is okay. is bring has, it back around has some amazing uh, physical benefits mm-hmm. for the body, and so fasting is something that is really really uh, beneficial 
prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. And we receive everything we believe. Mm-hmm. And I like to take responsibility for that. What I believe, I receive. And so there's the attacks of the enemy, but then there's also me receiving what I believe. Okay. And and so if someone believes every year at this time of the year, I'm gonna get sick. Mm. Guess what they're projecting into the world? Yeah. They're, they're declaring because down within their heart, they believe yeah. every year at this time I get sick. So I will resist sickness, the common cold. Yeah. I don't care if I'm feeling the symptoms. Yeah. I don't care if, if I'm feeling all the stuff. I'm going to fight it. Yep. I'm going to curse it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak against it. Uh, uh, I, I speak against sickness the way that Jesus cursed the fig tree because there is life in sickness. So Jesus cursed the fig tree and it withered away and died. And so with sickness in my body, I curse it and I command it to wither away and die. Similar to casting out a demon. Similar to casting out That's a demon. That's interesting. Taking its life. Yeah. And choking it out. Right. And I will take care of my body physically, yeah. of course. I, I'm not against medicines. I mean, and stud right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against medicines, so I'll take medicines. Mm. But I will speak to fevers as if it was a spirit, an evil spirit. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. And, and what are some stories that you've seen where you're like, okay, this is amazing. Oh yeah. So I'll share yeah. my my uh Let's go. my uh COVID story. Go for so, it. So so uh I'm getting ready to go to Ecuador. Okay. Have I shared this with you? No. I'm getting ready to go to Ecuador and it's my first time going out of the country like this to evangelize. And I had just met a healing evangelist. Okay. What year what year is this? Uh 2020. Okay, okay. And so right, bef- right before November, November of 2020, okay. there we go. Um, it was probably the month before. Mm-hmm. And I had just met this healing evangelist. I saw how he operated and how he was explaining the scriptures. I thought this was amazing. So I said, okay, I'm ready. I want to, I want to practice this All stuff right. out there. James, you know, faith without works is dead. Yeah. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and a month before I started to get sick. And it's COVID. My uh, my wife is sick. My son's sick. And the day that I remember feeling the sickness, I did everything that I thought I knew how to do. I put on Christian uh, television. I'm listening to worship music. I am reading every healing scripture that I could find. That's good. And it's getting worse. Oh, no. <laughs> So my body's starting to burn up, my head's pounding, my my I'm I, I'm aching all over. I I can barely open my eyes from the pain, and my wife is okay, my son's okay, but I'm quarantined in the room, mm-hmm. and it's not going well. And so it was pretty rapid. It was day one, day two, day three. Day three, I was curled up in a ball, and I was kind of scared. Because I was commanding, I was doing everything that I'm talking about today, Mm -hmm. resisting this thing, and it's kicking my butt. Mm -hmm. And uh, But something interesting that happened the day two was I called my aunt, my aunt prayed for me, and all the symptoms stopped for ten about 10 minutes. Hmm. And I knew that there was something with that, right? Yes. So so now day three, it's worse. It's 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 bad. And I'm kind of nervous, and and I'm laying on the bed, and I'm hurting, and I'm, and this is interesting. This is what I gathered from this. Satan comes to squeeze mm-hmm. to see if you really believe what you say, mm-hmm. and he came to test the word, and it wasn't God, it wasn't any of that. It was Satan coming to say, "Oh, you you believe in healing? Mm-hmm. Oh, you you uh you want to go to Ecuador and pray for the sick? Okay." So he comes in to squeeze. And uh and I and I'm and I'm hurting. And now I'm begging God. <laughs> I'm like, 
God, just heal me, Lord. Heal me, Jesus. Save me. And Put sugar on top, yeah, please. <laughs> nothing. nothing. I'm, I, and then I'm repenting for everything I've ever done. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to get rid of all filthiness, all thought. I'm like, Lord, I want, I, you know. So cleanse. months went by. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is day three. Yeah. This is day three. Uh, and then my wife comes. I was just to, talking about your list, list of repentance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and my, and my, uh, my wife comes in. And she says, uh, I, I, I couldn't see her. I could barely hear her. And all I hear her say is command it to leave. And it was interesting because it was like I heard it for the first time. And her words pierced through the pain, through all of the all of the symptoms, and it reached deep down somewhere in mm-hmm. my gut. Mm-hmm. And out of my gut, this thought came, and it was, yeah command him to stop yeah and so all i can say it was it was the same prayer but from a different place there was no doubt there was no um begging there was none of this Mm -hmm. it was satan take your hands off this body now in the name of jesus Mm -hmm. and as soon as i said that uh something shifted and then 10 minutes went by, headache stopped, pain stopped, ache stopped, fever stopped, everything broke. Really? And I literally, the day after I went to go get tested, it was negative. No way. And my wife and my son were still positive. Oh, wow. But I, and, and they got sick after me. Yeah. But, but within those three days, that last day, everything broke. That's amazing. So did you heal your wife and son? <laughs> I prayed for them. <laughs> I prayed for them. And interesting enough, they they still they went through the whole couple of weeks. Yeah. They were still positive. And uh but uh but I was yeah and I was fine. Like it but was it was nuts. It's very interesting. So a couple of things that brings this all back to the original question. One, and I think this is very convicting, you know, and it's and it kind of shows and, and we talked about this with healing, like Someone can get healed, right? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you felt better for 10 minutes and then, well. It came back worse. Well, yeah. it came back, right? And so somebody had the faith for you, but mm-hmm. did you have the faith to sustain no. it, right? You know, it's no. like, it's like, that, it's like that person bench, you know, helped you, you know, get off the bench 300 pounds, mm-hmm. or which, well, I don't know what your max is, but yeah. you know, let's say 300. That sounds good. Yeah. You're, you're like <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. Um, and then, so like they spotted you all the way to 300. Like, yep, you're, we got you. 300, mm-hmm. you up. And you can, you'd be like, yeah, I lifted 300. And then you get back under the bench. And really, you can only lift 225. And you get under there, and 300 <laughs> comes right back on your chest. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah. yeah, you're not strong enough yet. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you have little faith. Mm-hmm. You didn't mm-hmm. fully believe until, you know, it, it seemed like until that moment when your wife came in and gave you that. Great to help mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's what women, women do. It's a helpmate. Yeah. yeah. But she spoke that belief, and you're like, and even when you said it just now, mm-hmm. there was an authority in your voice. Yeah. Yeah. And so connecting that back to when we have to face, we, when we face the adversary, right? It's the same thing with like the Job story. Mm-hmm. God knows how great we are and how strong we are and what we can do. He put it in us, right? Mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. A, just like you said in James one twenty one. Yeah, he planted the word in us, and that 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 verse was very powerful for me. It's like because when I speak to people, when I coach people, when I speak on stage, and people are like, "Well, what if they're not believers?" I'm like, "The words inside of them." And when you hear it, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you know, you know, and it's like you already know. James one twenty one says it's planted inside of you. You're calling to. That greatness inside of them. Yeah. And then you, um, and then it's, and then Jesus sent the adversary after Job, but G, or no, sorry, God sent the adversary after Job because God knew how great Job was, but did Job know at the time? You know what? Talking, okay, we got to go into Job now. Let's go. Do you have, uh, I might have to get, because we got to look at the, a different translation. It changes the whole book of Job. This is gonna this is gonna blow people's <laughs> mind. It's gonna it's gonna give aneurysms to <laughs> to some religious people. Oh, no, no. It, it's it's uh, uh, well, you know what? They come to you for healing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we pray protection over them. Well, we pray. We pray I, break, I, break, I break that curse in the name yeah, of Jesus. Yeah, Sorry about go. that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
So so this so in the in the original language, right? Are we going to go to the the passion version? <laughs> <laughs> My son and I were just talking about that. Oh, uh, um, the Young's Literal Translation. Okay, what are you so, carrying over there? What are you carrying? <laughs> this is the uh, New King James. Okay, so, that one is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, that's what I got. So it's Job chapter two verse one. I just feel like it's a race to get there whenever I say that <laughs> in church. You're like, oh, I can find it faster. We can find it the fastest. Because people always bring up Job. And first off. Because they're looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. And first off, Job is Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So you got to look at the Old Testament through the lens of the cross. So things changed. There, there was a shift that happened. But James chapter, uh, Job chapter 1, okay, of course. It says, um, okay, in, in, in King James, all this, right? Mm-hmm. So it starts off, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Satan answered, the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. And then, of course, later on, Jesus says he's the God of this world, right? Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Is there none like him on the earth? Right? Mm -hmm. It sounds like God was presenting Job to Satan, Mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. But in the Young's Mm -hmm. literal translation of the Hebrew, Mm -hmm. it says here, And Jehovah said unto the adversary, Where hence uh, cometh thou? It's a hard to read. And the adversary answered Jehovah and said, from going to and fro on the land and walking up and down on it. And Jehovah said, saith unto the adversary, hast thou set thy heart unto my servant Job, because there is none like him on the land? It it changes the whole thing. He says, and I love, has thou set thy heart against my servant Job? because there's none like him on the land. So as soon as Satan comes in, God knows he's here because he set his sight on my servant, Oh, he already knew. <clears throat> yes. He knows everything. But it's interesting because in all these other translations, it just sounds like God just throws Job straight oh. to Satan. So he knew why Satan was there. He's like, oh, you found the best. And you, now- uh, you've set your eyes on him. Yeah, yeah. You're here, and 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 I love how it says. It says, uh, "Has he asked Satan the question? Have you set your heart on yeah. on him? Mm-hmm. Because there's none like him on mm-hmm. the earth." Mm-hmm. And then it's Job is an interesting character. Job is the oldest book in the Bible, uh, older than any of the other books in oh, the that's Bible. Interesting. And I believe that Job was bef- it was before Abraham, all these people, right? Okay. Job is is older. It's all they they've discovered that Job is the oldest book in the entire Bible. So I believe that Job was before God ever created a covenant with man. Hmm. So God didn't have covenants with man yet. Hmm. And Satan comes in and knew God was blessing him and came with, with Job on his mind already set to come and attack Job. And then uh, Job was unique. There was none like him on the earth. But in Job chapter 3, it says that Job confessed and said, um, everything that I had feared has come upon me. Uh-oh. Job chapter three, verse 25. And it says here, and the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. Mm-hmm. And I have dreaded, uh, mm. dreaded has ha- or every, er, and what I dreaded has, has happened to me. I am, I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest for, for trouble comes. And it's interesting that there is 365 times throughout the entire Bible that says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not fear. I am the Lord thy God. Do not fear. But Job, I'm not saying that he sinned because it says there was none like him on the earth and he was very unique. And he, and even the Lord says he has not sinned against me. I think there is a principle that says that whatever we fear, Satan will use to bring into our lives. That's good. Some food. This is this is this is good. I haven't brought. I haven't bust out some of these scriptures in a while, <laughs> and it's amazing how it connects. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You know, what we believe, what we say, the doubt, the mm-hmm. unbelief, the fear, 
Um, so, so that's interesting. So then, because I was just listening to um, a message about this particular topic, and I was saying that Satan will use your weaknesses or your fears against you. Mm-hmm. And so you're looking at what God has called my finest in the land, but then he still has a weakness. He has a chick in his armor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Satan started to use that to kind of pull it all apart. Oh, yeah. And 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 he and and then God didn't throw uh, Job under the bus. Satan was looking, and it's and it's scripture that says that he he roams around like a like a lion, right. seeking who he may dis- devour. And so, I think Jesus even confirms it again in the New Testament when he says uh, to Peter, "Satan has asked for you, but I've prayed and interceded, and and even though you'll turn away, you'll come back and strengthen your brothers." And so it's interesting because Satan does come to uh, attack us. So, and what's very interesting about all all of this, what we're seeing here is the, a lot of this discussion of of ye of little faith. You know, you you know, you getting sick, um, Job getting sick and losing everything, all comes before the redemption. Yeah. Yeah. And that, but God, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not only does do, does he receive, but then he receives double for his trouble, or you know, oh yeah, exponentially more. Yeah, and it's it seems like it's almost that the adversary comes, right? And so I love the the story of of Matthew chapter four, or Jesus and the temptation, because Jesus going back to Matthew seventeen twenty one here, only this can go out by prayer and fasting. Oh yeah, so Jesus gets baptized goes into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights to fast mm-hmm. and, pray, and pray and and then gets tested uh-huh right or tempted yeah by the by the adversary yeah so the tempter comes and and then he passes right yeah. he's able to pass the test right the tempter came to you oh, oh you're yeah. gonna go on this healing trip oh yeah Jacob oh I got you. We're going to take you down. Yeah. You're not going. Call it off. Yes. Call it off now. And it's interesting, too. If anybody has seen the movie The Shift, there's this scene in there about where the guy plays the devil and the the, the one he's 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 tormenting starts praying. Oh. And, oh, it is it is a savage scene. And uh, I forget the actor's name, but he's, he's famous. He does a great job. Yeah. Of I'm playing to, the I've devil. seen, oh, seen some goodness. of the previews on it. But he just starts praying. And in faithful prayer, and the devil leaves, oh, right? Dang. And so he's freed, right? You, yeah, yeah. You, you with authority, and belief, yes. and faith, and being you know reminded or, or called to by your wife. It'd be very interesting. Too bad she's not here to ask her, like, what made her go and say that to you? Oh yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you asked her that? Well, because we, we we had been so these are principles that we were already discussing and mm-hmm. walking in mm-hmm. and praying over, and and so. There's um, there's a lot of things that I see with people that it's interesting. You could you could see in the secular world someone that has authority. The police officers they have authority. They know the law, mm-hmm. and they will enforce the law. Right? Um, there's people that will get on stage and they're business owners. Mm-hmm. The reason why they're successful, right, is because they know what they need to do. And they execute. And there's no doubt, right? There, This needs to be done. Boom, boom, boom. On a daily basis, we're going to do this. And no one's going to stop us. Mm-hmm. But when a Christian comes to their authority, they lose their footing. And they're like, oh, I don't know if this is... Mm. Is this God? Doubt. God, are, are you... The doubt. Uh, are, are you doing this? Mm-hmm. They, they don't know whether it's God or Satan. Yeah. They don't know whether it's them uh, or or God's doing something. If you don't know what's happening, you're going to be taken out. Confusion. Confusion. Yep. So the moment that you you realize, hey, good things come from. I, I, I'm going to bring this super simple. All right. Good things come from God. Mm-hmm. Bad things mm-hmm. come from Satan. Mm-hmm. Health comes from God. Sickness comes from Satan. God is a good father. Satan is a evil adversary. Yeah. 
God wants to protect me, Satan wants to hurt me. Yeah. So once I draw that line and say, these things are good, these things are not, these things are God, these things are him, are Satan, then I can firmly resist Satan. Yeah. And then he has to flee. That's good. So I have to have that level of understanding and authority of who God is. Yeah. And most people that think that God wants to teach them a lesson by breaking their arm doesn't know who he is. <laughs> oh, okay. That's why my baseball career ended in high school. I ripped all the ligaments of my ankle, just <laughs> casually twisting my ankle on the third base. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to know that wasn't God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could have been great. <laughs> just put me in coach. Yeah. Um, and you know this is this is just very fascinating and and and, and f- at least from for for myself and I encourage anybody else who's out there who's who's doubting because I was a, a doubter and I had anxiety and I was like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know you know because I wasn't necessarily raised deeply in the word yeah and it is getting in to this word and reading through yes. and 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 understanding and studying it mm-hmm. at least that's what worked really well for me I. You know, some people it's that miracle healing. Some people it's that you know that miracle moment. They they feel the touch of God, right? God comes mm-hmm. in, or you know, Jesus comes into their lives and touches their heart, right? But for myself, it was this process of going in, like, what does this really say about yeah. anxiety? What does this really yeah. say about marriage and uh, you know and authority mm-hmm. and you know what does He really say? And I'm like, I just didn't know, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I just it, you know, God took had a period of time where He's like. I'm going to clear all this stuff out of your way, and I need you in this, and surround me with, you know, I wouldn't find a great Bible study group, but I mean, I was in this deeply, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, digging in, and like, you know, there's a statement for carpenters to say, how do you get a bad nail out? You get it out with a good nail. Oh. So, and that's kind of the thing, is like, we, so many people, especially of this, of this world, I mean, mm-hmm. we're all of this world, have had these bad nails put into us, oh, and yeah. we need to get these the, those out, identify them, and I get them out with the good nail. Yeah. And then once you do, you've really put yourself under a firm foundation. Yes. Which helps you, you know, walk a, a, a better path, walk a stronger path, especially mm-hmm. when the challenges come up. You know, and you can instantly be like, that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of Christians that they're good hearted. They, they, mm-hmm. they, they, they have a, a wonderful, you know, heart for the Lord, but they have, a lot of bad nails mm-hmm. and and then they get places of, of authority and then they're teaching others this place of doubt and unbelief yep. and then and then making it look like this is piety and this is just a good christian servant serving the lord and you need to suffer for jesus and it's it's um it's i think it's a, it's a disservice to god's people yeah because if you look at paul if he really was sick, mm-hmm. and when you're sick, you can't do a lot. And Paul <laughs> wrote, did a lot. I mean, there's a 13 books that he wrote <laughs> of the 66. Yeah, he, he he did a lot, and you can't do that Crazy. if you're chronically sick. You're right. You know, you're you're in pain. You're not feeling well. He was in prisons. He was uh, beaten and stoned mm-hmm. and 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 shipwrecked and and bitten by a snake. A poisonous snake, mind you, and he shook it off. You know, <laughs> brush that dirt off the shelf. Yeah, there. he's. Oh, they're waiting for him to die. Yeah. That's miraculous healing and provision. You know, and protection and protection. It, you know, and so you know to to kind of bring it back, and I view it this way, especially for the guys out there, mm-hmm. right? How do you get big muscles? You go work out, right? Mm-hmm. Do, do you always love going to work out? Not necessarily. Do you love it in the moment, especially if you're doing like CrossFit or burpees or something like that? Mm-hmm. It sucks. You're like, this sucks. Yeah. But afterwards, ah, oh. and, and this thing is like, it's you're something's driving you forward, mm-hmm. some type of of motivation, and hopefully a joyful drive. Like, hey, I want to get better, so I'm going to go through this suffering, right? There's mm-hmm. this joy mm-hmm. in the drive, right? Like, I'm going oh, yeah. to. I'm going to go study, you know, this, this stuff because I want to become a, you know, I want to get a, a degree in this and become, you know, a, chem, a chemist or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. So you're going to suffer through like, you know, having to pay for these things and like you yeah. know, eating ramen and, and, you know, and going and studying late night, you know, because you're going for that greater good. Yeah. And, and I always kind of view it that way where, um, are you in the fruits of the spirit while you're suffering? Mm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. is it, are you suffering for something righteous and purposeful? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's kind of, I feel like it's very similar, you know, with the suffering that he suffered. It's like, it was, mm-hmm. it was worth it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you take it back to Matthew 17, 21, right? 
with prayer and fasting. Like, I don't know if you have fasted before, my friend. Have you? It yes. Oh, you have. And how did how was it for you? The longest I've ever fasted was three weeks. Dang. And <laughs> Go for it, Jesus. <laughs> it Jacob, not, I mean Jacob. It was uh, it was not fun. Oh, okay. So I did it for all the wrong reasons. Oh, okay. And and uh <laughs> you didn't have any money here. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> and it did it it, it 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 was horrible. And then and then uh once I got past a certain amount of days, then I was able to like kind of flow through. Mm-hmm. But then at the end don't ever do this. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I fasted for three weeks. I'm going to eat. Lord, I'm going to eat. And so instead of easing my way back into food, I went to Filiberto's. Oh. <laughs> and I ordered the biggest meal <laughs> that I could eat. And I and I took four bites. And on the fourth bite, I felt like I was going to die. Yes. Everything locked up on me. My chest was hurting. Oh, my gosh. Needless to say, I, I, I mean, I thought I would, and then I was like, I'm such a sinner. And they, <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah. It's it, so funny you say that because the longest fast I did was a week. And as oh. soon as I hit that point, I just started just chomping down. I think I had almost like a meal and a half for yeah. dinner. Like I had like half of like a leftovers, then I ate whatever was for dinner. <laughs> I had to lay on the couch. My wife's like, what's wrong? Because like I never stopped moving. Mm-hmm. My wife's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you probably want to do a salad or a soup so or then something. I, so then once I, once I, it almost felt like, it almost felt like, you know, I'm like flu like symptoms. I was just out. I couldn't even open my eyes. But then once I'm like, I, I'll, I'll, I know this will pass. This too shall pass. And as soon as I did, I started to read like, how oh, should you break a fast? Yeah. <laughs> yep. like, I should have read this like this afternoon. Before. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like, do not eat a large meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, uh, you've encouraged me because I, I, I've been feeling like I need to fast. Mm-hmm. I was talking to a, a buddy of mine, Daniel. He was also talking about fasting. Mm-hmm. We were talking about that. And uh, so not only is it good for getting rid of unbelief mm-hmm. and, and getting into the word, but also when you need to make a major decision. Yeah. And then he was bringing up scriptures where it says that the disciples prayed and fast fasted before they put a leader in or before they went somewhere or before they... We're going to go to a, a nation, and, and they were praying and fasting before the decision was made. Yeah. And uh, he said there's just some clarity that comes when you pray and fast. Yeah. Well, and here's here's what I've learned, you know, as well as I've studied this, because that's what nerds do, um, <laughs> is that, one, just like you work out, like you go to the gym to increase your strength, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to increase your faith, you pray and fast. Mm-hmm. And one of the interesting things that I learned was, you're submitting the body, right? Yeah. This is not the goal. You're submitting mm-hmm. this this physical aspect to spend more time drawing closer to the Lord for his provision, trusting further in him, yeah. increasing your relationship and drawing closer to him. That's, you know, th- and th- when that's suffering, it's purposeful suffering. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm suffering to be with you. And then, of course, it does say, like, you know, nobody should know that you're fasting. Don't go around, yeah, you know, yeah. with a long face and, and, you know, put oil on your face and, yeah. and be in joy, right? So again, being the fruits of the spirit, you know, while you are suffering for me, mm-hmm. they aren't drawing closer to me and increasing yeah. your, your faith with me. And then, and then of course, then watch, like Jesus did that 40 days. Oh yeah. Test comes, passes, goes on and... I think it does a couple of things in the world. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, it changed the world. He changed yeah, the world. yeah, yeah. He, he began his he began his <laughs> his mission. Yes, yes. And and uh, I think in in some of the Old Testament uh, um, scriptures, uh, I think uh, King David mm-hmm. said he had humbled himself before the Lord with prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. And I and so there's this this humbling that happens that. You know, people say, "Oh, I'm I I I I'm going to humble myself before the Lord." Well, the examples in the Bible are they they fasted, put their body down, and that was their form of humbling themselves before God. Yeah. And so there's a humbling, there's a there's the putting down of doubt and unbelief, and stepping into faith. Yeah. 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 Faith. And what does that mean to you if you're somebody stepping into faith through prayer and fasting? So you're not just talking about it you're actually practicing it and doing something about it um you know, and 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 part of that humbling like i like someone can say yeah i'm going to humble myself before the lord but then you fra- you're fasting you're actually putting some action behind the words that you just spoke some skin in the game yeah you're putting some skin in the game <laughs> <laughs> some body tissues 
Yeah. And so you, I would look, I love the fact that you you did hey I did a three week fast the wrong way. Yeah. Oh yeah. What would be the what would be the right way and wh- how did that go for you when? So remember how I said there's things that we uh, that I've noticed that people ask God to do that He's already done, and then there's things that people will pray and ask God to do that He's already commanded us to do. I didn't know those two mm-hmm. existed, so I was praying and fasting, asking God to do something He had already done, mm-hmm. and then I was um, and then I was praying and fasting, not doing the things that He's already commanded me to do. And there's a lot of good scriptures. I think there's one in, in the Old Testament that talks about uh, this is the fast that I desire. And it's uh giving your food to to the to the um to those who need food, to uh put our body under and healing will flow out of our bodies. And it talks about the benefits of of fasting mm-hmm. and not thinking about selfish things, but thinking of how we can contribute to the Lord's work. And I wasn't doing any of that. I was totally selfish. I was fasting for healing when I didn't know that healing was the children's bread. And so um, there's a scripture that where, where Jesus is walking and this woman comes up to Jesus who's not even Jewish. Yeah. And Jesus didn't come to the Gentiles yet, you know. And she's saying, Lord, heal my daughter who's demon possessed. Mm. Heal her. And he ignores her. So if if you pray to the Lord and he doesn't answer, it's not a no. You know, he didn't answer her. Mm-hmm. And then she continues to persist, persist. And the disciples are like, get this woman out of here. Mm-hmm. And she just continues. And then Jesus says something, or audacious, and he says that, he said healing, he refers to healing. He says, he goes, uh, um, uh, he calls it the children's bread is not for the dogs. Right. And... She's needing healing, and he says the bread is not for the dogs. And uh, she says, right, Lord, but even the crumbs that fall to the floor the dogs eat. And he just stops and says, great is your faith. Let it be done according to your faith. And, uh, and she receives healing for her daughter. And it's interesting that Jesus is the bread of life. Correct. And he takes the bread at the Last Supper, and he breaks it, and Correct. he says, take, partake of this, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Right. And healing is the children's bread. Right. Isn't that crazy? Oh, I love that. I, I love that. And there's so much when you look at uh, the bread of life. Uh-huh. And then what happens then the next day, his body gets destroyed, oh, yeah. right? He totally submits the physical body uh-huh. for... The children. Yes. He submits the physical body. He submits himself completely. Yes. You know, his, and so therefore, are we called in the sense to do the same, to submit our physical body for his greater good or for Mm -hmm. others, for the love of others, laying Mm -hmm. our life down for others just as he did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I like too, we're we're, um, talking about the breaking of his body. In Isaiah 53, it says, He carried our sicknesses, he bore our pain, that by his stripes Mm -hmm. we would be healed. And then in Matthew, he says that he healed all who were sick, that it would be confirmed that he carried our sickness, he bore our pains, and by his stripes were healed. Man. And then I think Peter again says it again, and he says, by whose stripes were you healed? So when Jesus went to the whipping post, he was taking the payment for our sicknesses and for our pains. Yeah. And it's... That's it's, amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and as a parent, I mean, you can understand that. I mean, like, how many times if your kid's gotten sick, you're like, mm-hmm. I take it. Oh yeah, I'll take it for you. And how many times that you know, it, it's crazy that that we would do that for our own children, mm-hmm. and to think that God wouldn't do that for His. That's true. Isn't that That's nuts? A good point. <laughs> well said, my friend. Well said. <laughs> well, we've come up on an hour. I think Again. this is this is the beginning of a good series. I think. Oh yeah, prayer and fasting. It. We're gonna have to get into a little more of the effects of prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have to do some prayer and fasting. <laughs> and so if you guys want to join got, us on this point. prayer and fasting, uh, we'll, we'll probably be back in two weeks and and talking about uh, how, you know, let's see how many days we, we fast. Yeah. You know, I think this might be a good, like, January, like, beginning of January thing. Yeah. That- yeah, you know, that would be good to fast at the beginning of the year for this coming year. Right. So yeah. start to think about those things. Like, what are the things that you're praying for, you're hoping for, that you feel in your walk? I mean, even if you're just brand new, like, mm-hmm, hey, mm-hmm. I mean, that's it. Jesus 
gets baptized, then goes into the desert right away yeah. to pray and fast. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, after he passes the test, which you can pass the test, you just got to be remember your authority that, that's already been given to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then he goes on and do great things. Oh, yeah. And so what a great way to start 2024 with you know, taking fasting. this time, taking this time to think about it, survive the holidays, do the best you can to walk it out like the <laughs> Lord. But notice those things that come up for you. And maybe there's, there's some things that pop up during this time where you're like, I need to capture this. I need mm-hmm. to go and deal with this and heal this. And that can be a great thing to take into prayer and fasting. And then we can start that in January and oh, yeah. uh, go from there and make 2024 you're you're the planner. I got you're you're the planner. I got I got a <laughs> I'm walking with you, man. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you for uh liking, subscribing, hit that notification button, leave a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts and we appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. So until next time, we love you. God loves you. And God bless. Amen.